Okay, so welcome back to some more MX versus ATV All Out, and today we're going to start a completely new series. Hopefully it's something you want to see. If you do want to see it, make sure to leave a like on the video and let me know in the comments what you think about it and if it helps. Yeah, I know. You're like, what, what, what are we doing? What's this? What's going on? Well, this video might not be for everybody. It's not for the really good players. It's not for the even average players necessarily. It's for the, the people that are new at the game. You know, I've been playing these games for years and years and years, and I consider myself fairly average. Maybe slightly above average, but not great. And I know there's a lot of people that are way more qualified to do this than myself, but since I get asked questions like this all the time, I figured let's just make a video. Let's try to make it a series if it's what you want to see. Again, that's why I said totally supported by you, and you decide whether it keeps going or not. So what this is, is it's going to be like a tips in how to play MX vs. ATV All Out. And you can take... You, you can take a lot of these tips, I guess, into other moto games. Uh, if, if you played a lot of moto games over the years, you just kind of get a feel for how it works. And, and I talk about feel all the time, and we'll, we'll go over that when we get to preloading a little bit. But there is such a thing as feel. You can just feel whether or not you need to, to do something or how to do something in a game. You get into a flow, and you just it just works, I guess. So that's kind of hard to teach somebody, I guess. It just comes with repetition and practice. But... Hopefully I can kind of give you some tips to get you get you started, get you sent in the right direction. And the idea came, I don't think I said this, the idea kind of came from the last few evenings I've been playing online with my wife in uh, free riding lobbies. And she's getting better. She's getting a lot better. She's learning a lot through this game. And so uh, she'll follow me and I'll kind of tell her how I go about this section and then I'll follow her and see how she's doing with it. And, you know, just that's kind of where the idea came from. So... I don't know. We'll call it we'll call it something really cringy, like Wyndham's Moto Riding Virtual Gaming School. I don't know. Something really, really stupid and cringy and just kind of have some fun with it. And hopefully you enjoy it. And even if you're really good at the game, maybe, maybe there's something you didn't think about, which I highly doubt because all you guys that are really good uh, are so much better than me and, and teach me a lot of things, I guess. So that's what we're going to do this first video. I mean, if you want to see it continue, your suggestions would be great. But for this one, obviously, it's going to be what I thought would be good to go over. Like three really basic things that I think would help people to get started, which will be preloading, when and where and how to do it, cornering, and the whoops. Since the whoops in this game are a little bit harder to deal with than past MX versus ATV games. Minus all, or not all out, minus alive. I think alive sometimes was weird, but you could kind of hold down that trick button and get like this perfect wheelie through the whoops. So... Yeah, those are the three things that we're going to uh, cover today, I guess. And then we'll edit it and freeze it a little bit and kind of show you and try to make it as easily understandable as possible. And again, if you want to see more, make sure to let me know and hit the like button. And we'll go from there. But we're going to kick things off with preloading. Okay, so preloading. It's a really easy concept. You just kind of have to get used to it. So basically... What I usually tell people is that I flick the analog stick, the right analog stick, the right thumb stick, down and up quickly. Usually you can hear it click, click. But in this case, I'm already leaning back. So you can see that green bar loaded up. The suspension is preloaded. So basically what you have to do right before you leave the jump is flick it forward. Pretty aggressively, pretty hard if you want to get a full preload. And you'll get that full red bar to fill up. And there you know, you know you got a full preload. But... If you're in a more neutral position where you're not leaning back already, then yes. If you're going through like a rhythm section and you're not like having time or not leaning back, then if you wanted to preload, you would have to flick down and up quickly to, to get the preload. But if you're already leaning back like right here, see, you can clearly see we're leaning back. You can see that green bar right there. We're already leaning back. So right before we leave the jump, we will flick the analog stick forward, but not as aggressively, not as... Uh, quickly as we were before to get more of a partial preload like that so I hope that makes sense it's, it's kind of hard to explain but it's it's really easy it's basically just get used to flicking the analog stick down and up right before leaving the jump and then once you get more used to it you're already leaning back you just flick it forward see what I'm saying I hope that makes sense Okay, so one more thing I kind of want to talk about a little bit is when and when not to preload. So we're going to triple this but not get it clean. We're going to double and not get it clean. And then here on this triple, I felt like there was no way with that bad of a run, we were actually going to be able to triple into the corner cleanly without some sort of preload. So I just flicked the analog stick down and up like we talked about, and boom, no problem. We got over it. 
And then here we're gonna quad. And then I elect not to preload this step up double. So we're gonna clip both tires, basically kind of like a light case. And then there was no way, there was just no way we were gonna be able to triple out. So what I do again, we flick the analog stick down and up after we double this and we get over the triple really easy. And then this double, triple, triple here, no preload. We carried enough speed out of that corner and through this section that there was no need for it. Same here. We got through the corner good enough that there was no reason to preload. If you would preload here, unless you're trying to like do some weird line like a quad or something, there's no reason to. It's faster not to preload this section unless you need to. But since I didn't feel like we needed to based off of our speed, we're not going to preload. We're just going to go triple, triple. Super easy. Finish line jump, no reason to. Taking the outside like that, don't need to preload. It would hurt you more and make you slower trying to preload that because you're in the air so much longer. And then there's a couple other examples here. And supercross triples, typically you don't need to preload them unless you're trying to turn them into a weird quad or something. So it's just kind of a feel thing. The more you do it, the more you'll get used to it and it'll become uh, second nature to you. Okay, so one of the last things I wanna talk about is what do you do when you crash and you're, you're out of sync, you don't know what to do, how do you fix yourself? Clutch preload, clutch preload, clutch preload, clutch preload. You let the clutch out right before you touch the next jump and preload at the same time to keep the RPMs up with the clutch. You can tell when I'm clutching because you look at the little gear where it says three or two or whatever gear we're in, it'll light up red. And that's when you know when I'm clutching. Clutch preload, it'll fix it a lot of times. It's a quicker way to fix it. And especially if in, in multiplayer, you're you're on the last lap and you mess it up and you mess up the rhythm section, he's catching you. Clutch, preload, clutch, preload, clutch, preload. Okay, so on to corners now. Some of this, it's pretty easy and I think a lot of you might already have it, but just in case you don't, in case you're new, while well, you're at Wyndham's Virtual Motocross Supercross Video Game School, so you're in luck today. But what we're going to do is we're going to freeze the video again here. Leading into this corner, it's a fairly open corner. Usually, a lot of times you wouldn't even have to brake or clutch or anything. Just kind of control your throttle a little bit around it and boom, you're good to go. But in our case, we're actually going to brake a little bit because I went into the corner too hot and clutched once really quick. You could see the clutch light up in the bottom right hand corner, that little circle where the gear is, where it shows what gear we're in. You can tell when I'm clutching. I clutched in that corner back there. And then here we're gonna freeze it again because a corner like this, you really don't have to do anything. There's no reason to break or clutch or anything. Just land kinda in, at the angle of, you know, the corner of the, how you're turning and just keep going. There's no reason to really break or clutch or anything there. You just land off the triple and keep going. It's an open corner. It's a very, it's not a tight corner. Uh, this corner up ahead is another example where typically you won't really need to do anything. I think I clutched there because I felt like my RPMs were down a little bit, but that's another one of those feel things. You can just kind of tell that, okay, I need to, I need to do this or this or, or whatever. But as a general rule of thumb, the bull turns like this one, a lot of times I won't really break, but I will clutch. And then if I'm carrying too much speed, I will slightly break, clutch, and then get back on the throttles. It's that simple. Here, I don't do anything. No clutch, no brake, no nothing. It's all kind of a feel thing. If you feel like you don't have the RPMs or the speed, maybe give it a clutch and then you might have to preload. They all kind of go hand in hand. The preload and everything. It's. I know we're talking more about corners now, but you know what I mean? If, if, you're, if you come out of a corner and don't have the speed, then you're gonna have to preload probably and so on and so forth. But for the most part there, I think I might have braked a little bit and then clutched for sure. So, I mean, you can definitely tell when I am. Just pay attention to that little circle in the bottom and you can tell when I'm clutching. And I clutch quite a bit. You're, I, I clutched again, I think, because I didn't feel like I had the momentum. But typically, a corner like that, you won't have to. Same with this one. Now, I do clutch to get my moment or my uh, RPM back up just so I can drop a quad there. But for the most part, it's just, it's, it's a feel thing. I mean, I, I a lot of corners like that one, I think I almost always grab the the clutch at least once. Here, usually I don't. There, I didn't again, so that's two times in a row we didn't have to. And then this corner, usually I don't break into it, but I will clutch. Well, that time I didn't. I felt like I could hold it around the corner, and I didn't need to. Here we're going to, we take the inside, we give it a clutch, and then a, a preload. That simple, really easy, no big deal, and, 
And that's basically how cornering goes. Okay, so the last thing I kind of want to talk about here is the whoop. So this run, as well as the next one, is basically having that front end way too high. We're leaning back way too much. It doesn't work. It's not like past MX versus ATV games where you just lean back and it's that simple. You, There's a, a specific way to do it. When you lean back too much, you get this weird bounce off the rear tire. And I know some of you know what I'm talking about. So you can't lean back too much. Or you can loop or a bunch of weird things can happen. The next run is doing nothing. I've heard people say, just don't do anything. Just stand them straight up. No, totally wrong. When you do that, that doesn't work either. It sometimes can work, but for the most part, that don't work either. You have to find that balance. Just lean back a little bit. These next two runs are what I would consider decent runs. Lean back slightly, but not too much. And the left analog stick actually is responsible for a decent amount of the, the rider too. If you lean the left analog stick back or forward, just do it driving down a straight sometime. You'll see it makes him sit down or stand up. So the left analog stick can be used too, but mostly the left or the right one, just lean it back a little bit. And here at the end, this is the last run, I will show you kind of what I'm talking about with that rear wheel bouncy glitch. I had to go to Las Vegas to kind of find it, and hopefully that makes more sense if you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so that will wrap up the first lesson of Wyndham's Motocross Supercross Virtual Video Game Riding School. Yes, I know we need to work on the name. It's like, it's like Shield, man. I forget what that stood for in uh, Avengers. Yeah, it's like that. We got to come up with some kind of shorter name here or something because it's too much. It's too long. But I don't know. I, I hope it could help. I hope it could help somebody, some of you that are new to the game. It's not for the MLG pros, man. It's not for the people that have been playing the every moto game known to man. It's for the people that are new, that just saw it sitting on Walmart's shelf and picked it up because it looked fun and maybe got frustrated with it because they couldn't uh, couldn't figure it out. It was maybe their first one. And so maybe they came back to it and wanted to learn something and you stumble across this video. I hope it could help in some way, shape, or form. If you want to see it continue, make sure to leave a like. And let me know in the comments what you would like to see next episode if we even do a next episode. And I do realize that there's people a whole lot better than me. I'm not the greatest at it. But at least hopefully I can help with some of the basics, you know, the, just the, the basic mechanics of the game and how it works. And you can um, put this towards other moto games. It's not just this one. It's, it's things you just learn after playing so many games, so many motocross games. You just kind of pick it up, you know what I mean? And maybe if you guys ask me for some crazy thing that I just cannot do, I have not the ability to, to do it. It's something too difficult in the game. Maybe we'll have to get a substitute teacher in here. Might have to get a substitute teacher to teach you how to do it. I don't know. We'll see. It could be a fun series, I think. It could be a really interactive series. I think that this could be could be a lot of fun. Not just for learning purposes of for for new people. And, and another thing I want to say, because I do see this sometimes, is people will be like, oh, they're noobs. Get out of here. You know, go back to whatever, whatever. That's the most ridiculous stupid comment I've ever seen that is dumb the more people we get involved in this whether they ride in real life or not it doesn't matter it's a video game there's so many video games you guys play that <laughs> not you guys I'm sorry I'm generalizing that the people that say stuff like that play that they don't do in real life so you're gonna play let's say you played alien isolation you you you're telling me that you've been to space and fought aliens if you haven't you can't play alien isolation crazy that is insane tell me how how stupid that sounds no the more people we get to play these games the more popular they get the more feedback they get the better the games get the more companies that might want to make games the more options you might have we might have as a motocross community you know guys complain that oh we don't get enough moto games we got a bunch of moto games this year and three games for us is a lot like that seems like a crazy amount of uh, games because usually we don't get that much we get like one a year at best so I don't know I just don't like seeing the oh they're new they they shouldn't be playing no they should be playing they should learn and I hope it can be fun for them if they don't like it after that then hey they don't like it after that and uh, you know go back to whatever they were playing before but at least try it and maybe try to learn something and get better at it. so 
That's going to do it for this video, guys. Kind of my final thoughts. Again, if you want to see this series continue, please make sure to leave a like on the video. And let me know in the comments what you would like to see next time, as well as if you would like to see this continue, or if it was helpful. If it was helpful, please, I would love to hear your thoughts. And uh, we can have a conversation down there in that comment section. But you guys and girls are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for the support on the channel lately. And until the next video, take it easy.